This week we talk life and hoops with the founder of the Heron Wellness and the Heron Project, a man on a mission to help others in recovery and really one of the most interesting 30 for 30s that exists. We'll talk about it. The Durf Free High School legend himself, Chris Heron. DK, as always, this episode of One Star Recruits is brought to you by 500 Level. It's 500level.com for all the best shirts in sports. They got all the Celtics guys on there. Peyton Pritchard, Chris Stapps Porzingis, Jalen Brown, Al Horford. Go check it out, 500level.com. Use the discount code One Star at checkout for 20% off everything. Let's go. This is Chris Heron. I'm on with the One Star Recruits podcast. Yo ho, aloha, one star recruits here with you. Let's just keep the music going. We're gonna go right into current events. Let's do some news. Let's get some rips reactions. Here we go. Bill Belichick, he's in the hot seat. He's headed to Las Vegas, also a mess. Rip, is this the end of a dynasty? And it's kind of like the head of a snake dying where Belichick goes and then McDaniels goes and Patricia goes and Belichick Jr. is gone and Mike Vrabel is now terrible. I don't think so, man. That would be crazy. Just the whole coaching tree gone in one year. But he's he's one of the rare guys in sports, DK, that's kind of earned the right not to be fired at this point. So they'll, they'll come to some sort of agreement where he steps down or probably at the end of the season. But uh, you, you, maybe McDaniels will take it easy on him this week. He's, a, he's his mentor. So don't blow the guy out. Bradley Cooper and Gigi Hadid started doing some sharing some time together. They're dating a little bit. Some people say that I look like his brother in law, maybe. They call me Bradley Pooper sometimes. You think this is true or false? Bradley Scooper, Bradley Pooper. I agree, man. You got when you got the beard going, you you look like uh right right about his age too, I think. Maybe a little bit younger, but you, you got a little Bradley Pooper going for sure. I agree. I think he's 48. Gigi Hadid, I think, is mid 20s. So there is some. He is. He's older. He has me by a good by a good amount. But yeah, thank you. Yeah, both good looking guys. Thank you, Rip. I appreciate it, dude. Yet again, Netflix is raising their prices. What's your price? What's your tap out price on Netflix, Rip? Man, I just got my Disney Plus uh, price increase to like thirteen ninety nine a month. So we're gonna cut that. My wife said, "Let when we cut Disney, let's go for Netflix." I don't even know how much it is at this point, but. Man, I, I don't want to pay more than like 15 bucks, but it's probably I'm already probably already priced out. Yeah, it's about right there. I think they're starting to do it per head per head in the household now. So you're about 15. You're still in play. 15 though is fair for you. Yo, how how about how about Hall of Fame linebacker Dick Butkus? He passed away, rest in peace, at 80 years old. I'm gonna say it's the over for you in this next question. I'm gonna set it at 1.5 and I'm gonna go with the over, just barely. How many Bulldogs have you, Rip, met in your life named Butkus? I think that's a big fat zero, DK. You, you were wrong. You should have took the under. Zero, man. I, I, I met one named, uh, named Marley, but not Butkus. Wow. wow. Listeners, I, I bet you could think of at least two in your head right now. There's there's two for me, one and a half when it kind of could be, but you're not, you're not sure if it's a full Bulldog. There's lots of them out there. Rest in peace, Dick Buckus, though. Great, great football player, semi decent actor, Rip. Like your level of acting skills, I think. One star acting, probably two star acting skills. But you know you're a legend, man, when dogs start being named after you, like by the dozens, for sure. That, that's when you become legendary, DK. Could be false. I couldn't make that up just because I know three. I actually know three butt kiss bulldogs in my life. All of them have passed on. They have eye problems. Tough dogs to keep alive for a while. Rest in peace to all the butt kisses, canine and human, DK. Yeah, yeah. How about college football has started to adopt the Eagles tush push? You actually saw it in person. You were there this weekend at the game. Is this exciting or boring? It's exciting if you're an Eagles fan because they're, they're the ones that do it the best. And, and it, it's really unstoppable. Like you said, I saw it in person this weekend. That, it's going to be out loud at the end of the year. I know they reviewed it this offseason, but I can't see how it continues to go because it's, it's absolutely unstoppable, DK. Speaking of that Rams-Eagles game... The Giants, a couple weeks ago, Giants Evan Evan Neal, he called out the Sheep fans for booing. He suggested some bullshit like they flip hot dogs and hamburgers somewhere. Something like that. Something cliche and cheesy. You were just at this Rams-Eagles game, which on TV looked like it was an Eagles home game at SoFi Stadium. Should the players be able to call out the fans? Seems fair. Yeah, you could. I mean, it's 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 America. Freedom of speech. You can say anything you want, but you better be ready for the backlash. I'll tell you what, though. I, I wasn't a sheep, man. I was I was the guy. If you zoomed in on Section 505, there was a, a guy in a Phoenix Sun shirt at the Rams Eagles game. That was me. But so I'm not a sheep, DK. 
it's looking like you look like the Coneheads movie, like the like the dad who got came in Coneheads, uh, Dan Aykroyd out there with your sun shirt on, confused. Like you just re- pretty annoying to wear a basketball shirt. I appreciate it because of the situation, though. What a what a hot mess they have in Los Angeles. This is it is because people move to LA from other places. That's why LA exists. There's not a lot of homemade uh, Los Angelians. Would you would you call yourselves it, Rip Angelinos? An- Angelinos, yeah. And who would have thought a team that just won the Super Bowl two years ago it just gets outnumbered fan wise by like eighty percent on, on the day on a routine basis? It, it's unbelievable. But you got to win a lot in LA to for people to love you. That's the bottom line. It's Vegas too. It's happening in Vegas too. I actually think maybe the culture has shifted a little bit where going to games isn't as cool as it is in some of those other tier two or tier three or tier four cities. Different conversation though. The experience is is great at these lovely homes on the water in California in your outdoor sports bar. Uh, if you have that popping off. Also good at Buffalo Wild Wings. So, lots of other options. Keep it going, though. This is so, keep the music going. We'll do, uh, let's do this one. You got the kids. Just like that. The the brick and mortar Toys R Us stores are back. What was your, your toy of choice growing up from Toys R Us? And what, first that, Rip, what was your toy of choice? You're probably a Legos kid. I was honestly a, a Play-Doh kid, man. I, I used to actually, I, I discovered that it tastes very salty and, and used to eat it all the time. So I, not only to play with it, but I loved uh, enjoying the taste of it too. I was a Play-Doh kid. I'm probably, probably where I've got allergies and, and digestive issues, but it was Play-Doh for me. I mean, everybody knows that the, all, the Play-Doh eating kids are also the booger eating kids. So congratulations on being a booger eating kid too. Was it just an accepted thing you did? Uh, Rip would eat the Play-Doh like everybody else was building little figurines and you're eating it and it's just that's what you did i i was sly about it man i was stealth and it, just like you have to be when you eat your boogers man you can't let anyone see what's going on so you gotta you gotta do it uh in private or just not let not let anyone know what's going on it's a whole world out there the booger eating world it's another podcast you can leave it now you're open with it now we know so a whole it's a whole it's an underbelly there's an underbelly of booger eaters out there dude toys R Us though kind of smart okay well, let me tell you what's smart about it. Then I'll ask you what your price limit would be because the uh, the smart thing with this Toys R Us bounce back is what they're doing is they're opening just like a dozen flagship stores in the bigger cities. as kind of just like, you know, get the party started, good walk traffic. But then they're rolling out locations in airports and on cruise ships. Those are going to kill, bro. Especially since you can like double the price in those locations too. The profit's going to be unbelievable. You, you Airports and cruise ships... There's nowhere else to buy once you're past that certain line. So you can charge as much as you want. Double, triple, yeah, 4X. And so those prime cities, really smart. This is a new group. It's WHP Globals, this group who bought Toys R Us completely out of bankruptcy. And they're going to do this. They're going to launch their uh, air, land, and sea campaign. So kind of smart, man. That land campaign will work as your your social hubs and your brick and mortars. People can go get you know fired up again. So I think it's going to attach our generation people who grew up going to toys r us our age who not only will go in because it's going to smell the same and then your kids are going to want to buy shit okay so here's the question now probably when we went what would be your price limit for your kids you can't let them go crazy in there what would be your price limit for your kids nowadays 250 bucks is probably worth 60 bucks in 1994 to be honest with you well there's two there's two tiers to this because it's in a normal circumstance. My price limit is probably like 10, 15 bucks. I'm a one star. I'm cheap. I'm frugal. But the other part is that if your kid's throwing a tantrum in an airport or on a cruise ship, that, that price goes up, man. I'd probably pay 50 bucks to end that tantrum and get out of there. It's bad parenting for sure. Teaches all the wrong lessons. But when you're under the gun like that in a full, full fledged tantrum, you know, DK, you've seen it before. You'll pay uh, more than you normally would. Such a so smart. They're, what a smart business plan. Yeah, to, it, they're going to definitely cruise ships and airports. That's just going to be a great hub. I like this combo. I think more businesses might need to do this combo in the if the kids can't have something there, they go crazy genre. You know, there's some other stores that exist, a Disney store, perhaps. Yeah, kick people while they're down, take advantage of uh, who's buying people. their luggage at the luggage store when they're already at the airport. 
Like the opportunity is already missed. Someone, like already... someone who broke a wheel on the way in, or I mean, like I said, kicking people when they're down and, and taking advantage of people at their worst. Honestly, it sounds like a bunch of private equity crooks that, are, that had this idea, but hey, they're going to make money off it for sure. Yeah, they're, they're selling it, man. It makes sense in my head. Pretty good. Pretty good. Probably some pretty good public speakers. This dude, Chris Heron's a pretty damn good public speaker. That's a hell of a thing, huh? Public speaking is no joke, DK. I, I've done it recently in front of small groups and, uh, you know, just that informal stuff. Like, I, and we mentioned in the interview, Little League, a team Little League. Like, you get nervous in front of parents, whatever. But like Chris says in this interview, man, he gives some good tips. We talk Celtics. We talk substance abuse recovery. He's really a leader in that. Videos all over the internet of him speaking to high school kids and helping people out. Everyone, check out this awesome interview with our guy, Chris Heron. Now joining the One Star Recruits podcast, we have a husband, a father, a native of Fall River, Massachusetts, the founder of both Heron Wellness and the Heron Project, providing support for the treatment, recovery, and prevention of substance abuse disorder. 15 years sober, Chris Heron is on with the One Star Recruits. Thanks for hopping on with the One Stars, Chris. Yeah, that's what's up, man. I appreciate you having me. It's a beautiful day, man. We're glad to have you. Uh, we're going to get into it over the next 20 minutes or so, but... Let's give some love to Massachusetts and New England right off the top. You grew up in Fall River, like I mentioned. I believe I believe you're in Rhode Island now. Everyone I knew who grew up in Massachusetts has a certain kind of pride that they carry with them. Describe that upbringing a little bit, and even after everything you've been through, how being a New England kid kind of shaped who you are today. I mean, I grew up in a tough town, right? Fall River, Massachusetts is a, a, an old mill town, um, blue collar, diverse and, uh, you know, I was raised that way. I was raised blue collar. You know, my mom and dad had my brother and I, when they were very young, you know, we were part of that process while they're building their life we're, we're building with them. And I come from a very rich history of, of basketball, uh, four of Massachusetts is, you know, at one time was the town, um, was the city in Massachusetts for basketball. And, you know, when you're 14 years old, 15 years old, playing in front of 4,000, 5,000 people. You know, you better have pride. You know, you better bring it. Yeah, it's all about pride. You know, Chris, it's kind of all about family in Massachusetts, too. And you talk a lot about the importance of family in recovery. I want to kind of go right to the recovery process. It's so amazing. Sure. And, and I think we can help a lot of people here. Kind of you talk about family and having the support and backing of loved ones throughout the entire process for listeners out there who may have family members currently in the recovery process. Can you talk about family support and why it's such an important piece? You know, uh, to the to the people who have family out there who are in that process, you know, get in with them, right? It's so important, man. Like, I see too many people come to my center, you know, when they walk in, they're <clears throat> surrounded by people who love them, but all but then they get sober and they kind of go on their own journey. I think the journey has to be shared. I think, you know, even the people who love us, need to witness and need to be part of and, and develop passion and pride in recovery. So, you know, when, when I opened Heron Wellness, the one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to, I wanted to include family. I, I, when I got sober, my family was kind of shut out, right? I walked into a treatment center. They were like, you know, you're good. We're taking them from here. You know, my, my model, my center is the exact opposite. You know, sticking with it, there's a, a situation too when when family members can actually take action that part of action in life that a lot of us struggle with too and it seems like the first step in getting help can be can be tricky and the hardest part really getting started in general what do you sure. recommend for those family members who want to take the next steps with their loved ones who might be be listening to this this morning is it a pick up of the phone is it a have a conversation what's the first step to get that party started you know, I think it, it all stems from honest conversations, right? Like I have loved ones who struggle, right? But I'm not afraid to have that honest conversation with them about how I feel and what I'm witnessing and, and, and what I'm going through on that journey. You know, oftentimes people stop the journey because of family, right? They're the ones who are picking up the phone. They're the ones calling. They're putting all the work in, the legwork to get that person they love into recovery. And and to me, treatment's always the option, right? It's it's always the option. I've learned in recovery, you know, 15 years sober that that sometimes you have to love from a distance, right? You can't you can't be in the mix. 
but but treatment was is always the is always the option for me. It's always the option. You know, something that I just watching videos here, watching the center, watching you for this interview a little bit that came to me was you speak so well, Chris, at schools, organizations, groups, public speaking in general. It, it kind of it's, it's tough. It's tough for folks, whether it's work, whether it's at a little league game, uh, whatever it may be. What's a trick that you've developed over time to become not good, but a great public speaker? I think it requires a lot of practice. I think it requires a lot of, you know, insight. I think it requires scouting. You know, when I first started, I kind of, I kind of treated it as if I was playing against an opponent in, in basketball. So, you know, I, I listened a lot. I watched a lot. I kind of read the room quite a bit and I just kind of shaped it to where I thought that I could have the greatest impact. Thank you, man. I want to just shift over to basketball and I'll pass it back to Rip. I've noticed recently in basketball, uh, for, for better or for worse, cannabis is becoming part of the lifestyle. And uh, a lot of people feel differently about cannabis, whether it's a gateway drug or whether it's a, a pain reliever, whatever it may be. Uh, I've seen guys like Marcus Smart have a, have a weed bar at his wedding. Ricky Williams has recently said he, wish, he wishes that the trainers passed out joints on the airplane instead of pills uh, when coming home for pain. Cannabis in the NBA, when I say that, what, is, what does that hit you as? Is that a thumbs up or thumbs down? Gosh, you know, I think it's I think it's similar as alcohol, right? I think it's a thumbs down for some people and a th it's a thumbs up for others. I think it's a very personal decision. I think it's, you know, the loved ones who 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 you're going through the process with it if it affects them, what you're missing out on, what you're not present for. So I, I think it's very, uh, you know, I'm not going to judge, right? Some people out there use it and use it well, and more power to them. I know for me personally, I I don't I wouldn't be able to use it well. Great answer. Thank you, Chris. Hey, Chris, we close out every interview with a, a little segment we call one star to five star. We're one stars. We're trying to get better with advice and tips from, from you and everyone else we have on this pod. So just a few questions here to close it out that we, we're going to use a one to five star scale, one being the lowest, five being the highest for the answers. Mm -hmm. I want to start it off with a parenting question. You have two grown kids and, and one, I believe, in high school right now. I have two young boys myself. They're five and seven. So I'm kind of just starting out. Uh, yeah. But they're really getting into sports right now. And, and it's been a struggle because we're trying to be careful not to overexert where they have practices every day of the week and then games on weekends and then school and family kind of get put on the back burner. So I want to ask you, because you grew up in that life and you've been through it now as a parent. What's the what's some five star advice for, for parents of kids with all these extracurricular activities to still kind of be able to maintain some sort of balance? Listen, I think it all it all depends on on your child's happiness. You know, like like I my 15 year old son, he was doing AAU basketball. We were traveling all up and down the East Coast and I just didn't see happiness. I didn't see joy in him. So as as his dad, forget my my basketball background, I, I had to pull back. You know, I had to kind of unplug a little bit and say, let's find our joy again. You, you know, my my oldest boy played high school, prep school, college, you know, and he'll be the first to tell you, he was never really, he was never really happy. Um, it, it was tough for him, you know, both mentally, more mentally than physically. So, you know, for me, it's all about the joy in the kid. It's all about the joy in the child, how they play the game. You can, it's written all over them, you know, and I think we just have to read that. That's a great answer, man, because so many and, and not only for them, but for you, because growing up in that life, you know, you, you know that inside and out. So to be able to recognize that, I think, is, is a big thing. You, you uh, know, I also think, like, what's the ultimate goal? You know what I mean? Like, so, it, you know, obviously some parents have, you know, higher goals than others, but and some kids do. So I think it's identifying where your kid wants to go with it and whether or not he has the joy and, and the enthusiasm to go that far with it, because now it's a different animal. It's 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 nonstop. It's 24 seven. It's travel. It's hotels. It's cars. And if 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 the joy is with it, then, you know, we we, we can we can get it done together. Yeah, because the ultimate goal should be happiness. I'm glad no, I'm no. glad that's that's the first thing that came to your mind there. Mm -hmm. You were the subject of one of the best 30 for 30 episodes ever. It's called Unguarded. I just watched it again the other night. It came out, I think, in 2011. It's yeah. it's a really good look from the outside at your journey, the highs and the lows through basketball while fighting addiction. And 
from from my perspective from the outside you always hear these these types of shows and, and sometimes they might misrepresent or embellish the truth a little bit i know you were obviously heavily involved in this one what were your thoughts on on the finished product of unguarded and were there any like parts where one maybe one star parts where you didn't agree with something how something was portrayed or was yeah it, was, of course yeah. so so my one star my one star would be um for some people, the takeaway is I was this really good basketball player high on drugs. You know, like I, I don't I didn't I didn't support that spin. And I didn't to be honest, I didn't know I didn't know it would land there. But but some people would see me watch that documentary and say, like, you were killing it high. Um, I wasn't right. I wasn't. I was unraveling. And um, so so that's one part of the documentary that I wish. Uh, came through that you know how what it did to my career and and the games that I struggled you know and then there's other things that I love man like I did this in 2011 heroin wasn't talked about you know like fentanyl heroin overdoses it really wasn't that mainstream in a sense and and my wife my wife and I with our children we put ourselves out there and and to see where it's gone over the last you know 10 years 12 years um I, I couldn't have dreamt it bigger you know the fact that people are still watching it the fact that it's in most treatment centers in america and, and people you know are are attaching some hope to their story because of it and i mean you were speaking to groups even in that in that documentary and i know you've done so much in the 15 or 15 years mm -hmm. since then it, it's been amazing i want to just real quick question about basketball because you played uh, 25 games for your hometown team, the Boston mm -hmm. Celtics, back in 2000, 2001. They're about to enter year seven with with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, and they've got you know three losses in the Eastern Conference Finals, the one loss in the finals with to the Warriors. But they're they're running it back again. They just added Drew Holiday, which was huge over the weekend. On a scale of one to five stars, the one being the lowest, five being the highest. In your mind, what is what are the chances that we see that Tatum and Brown combo bring the Celtics a title at some point? Five star. All right. Five star. Yeah, yeah. I think that I think the pieces that they're adding, I think, you know, they might be one shot blocker, one big man away right now, but um with Porzingis, with Drew, with the the, the pieces are there and, and the talents there. And now with both of those stars a, a year older and more experienced, I think it's five star. I love it. Yeah, they they changed so many vital pieces over the last couple months, but sure. it's gonna be interesting to see this year. Yeah, last one, man. I, I was driving back from Sacramento to, to Long Beach uh, on Saturday, actually. I, I was passing through Modesto, and I couldn't help but think of that time that you were heading to the Oakland airport to get your wife, and you got sidetracked in Modesto, just a little small town off the five in, in Northern California. And it was really almost the end of your story there. It was probably, probably one of the worst days of your life. I, I couldn't help but think of how far you've come since then. What is, uh, what's something you're proud of for yourself? for during this whole recovery process because we all deserve to be recognized for the good things what's something you're proud of that, that you've done you know i i think um and i tell people this all the time especially people in early recovery like i knew i had something really special when i saw it in my kids eyes you know like i felt it i felt the growth i felt the recovery i felt the distance i had put in between alcohol and drugs but it wasn't until I saw it in my kids, I was like, damn, like now we got something really special. So, you know, my recovery through my children's eyes uh, is probably my greatest accomplishment. Hey, I love that answer, man. I'm, pr I'm proud of how, you know, how far you've come as a father. Everyone go follow Chris at C underscore Heron underscore on Instagram. You can check out heronwellness.com to keep up with everything going on at the facilities in Massachusetts. Hey, man, congratulations on 15 years sober. We wish yeah, you the bro. best of luck with your journey. And uh, thanks, Matt, really, thanks for doing so much good work helping high school students and people in recovery and really just being such a great ambassador for sobriety, man. I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed. I really, really appreciate you guys having me on. But it's uh, it's one day at a time and it's and it's just stacking wins, man. And, and that, you know, I've been very fortunate and blessed to stack a win for the last 15 years. Chris is in a new city every week. This guy's all up and down the Northeast. He's hitting uh, California. So I'm out in Fresno State. He's speaking all over the place. 
if anybody you know in your circle is uh, involved in addiction and this is something that speaks to them, check out his stuff. Go see him. Even see him when he comes to your city. Um, pretty inspirational uh, guy to overcome what he has overcome. The 30 for 30 was for real. It was great. I love the ones that are the most authentic. Those 30s for 30s, man. Chris, Chris's episode hit pretty hard. Like the, the unimaginable for somebody with so much upside and talent. Usually that's the 30 for 30 strategy that works the best. And then if it's told right, it's very good. What's your top, what's your top five 30 for 30s, Rip? Oh man, that's a hard one right off the bat. I, I Unguarded is in the top five for sure. I mean, it's one of those ones that makes That's you- with the Unguarded with, with, with Chris Heron. Wait, I'll give you a second to think. I'll give you, I can, I can do a couple of mine off the top of the head because it's pretty easy. Some stand out to me a lot. Last Dance was i think 2020 amazing two escobars that was uh pablo escobar story with involved with soccer youngstown boys really good mm. about the football program youngstown um what else celtics fans i loved the bias of lenny bias without bias was terrific what else what else am i missing that was classic it the so U, good. I know the U is really good. The the University of Miami one, I remember that. Uh, Fab Five was awesome. I mean, every one of these is, is amazing. Fab Five, a lot. Some of them don't. Some of them aren't as good though. Is the truth of the matter? I was kind of even disappointed with the trial of Allen Iverson. was was a mid for me. That could have been better. I think they could have showed a different story of Allen Iverson. Oh, Randy Moss episode, Rand University, unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. with the bigger the turnaround, the better the episode, maybe. Yeah, and and the more it relates to when we were growing up, man, because a lot of these were were right in that time in the '80s and '90s that we we lived through, and now seeing a, a different angle on it, and and most of the real story is is makes it even better. We talked basketball a little bit. He's on for the Boston Celtics with their trade. Everybody's on for the Celtics. They re- re-signed Peyton Pritchard, t-shirt at five hundred level. Now he's going to be there for a little bit. Good signing, a guy who can. They kind of stashed him and knew he can play. I think they were nervous throughout the year when he would show some glimpses of being a really good off the bench guy. He's kind of like a Gary Payton type individual, but can really shoot it and can actually D it up pretty well. So, so Payton Pritchard is going to be around. The Celtics looking like they're putting together a championship team as I think the NBA would hope for. All good going on. I missed the only game in Hawaii. It was a couple of days ago. The Clippers came. Played uh, here in Honolulu against, uh, it was the Bones Highland show is what it was, Rip, to be honest with you. Uh, he's looking like he's having a little bit of development, Mr. Highland. One star alum. Is he going to is he gonna start for, for the Clippers or is he just warming the seat for uh, Russell Westbrook there? Or James Harden. You never know that team, what's going on. But the fans seem to love him. He was really rocking the Aloha spirit, so that was nice to see him out here. Uh, NBA, those, we got it started. We're going to keep it on the back burner a little bit. Let's do NFL. This is going to be a shorter episode. I got to do an airport pickup. So my bad, my bad rip, my bad listeners. Um, but I, I want to get some off my chest. I had my first bad week of fantasy because of Mr. Reliable for me is a guy named Justin Jefferson on the Minnesota Vikings. He's currently banged up and mentally banged up. I think he's just very pissed off with the whole situation there. It's getting ugly pretty quick in Minnesota. Maybe it's time to move cousins, Kirk cousins along rip. What do you think? Well, the talk now is that, you know, he's he's out for at least four weeks on, on IR. And if he comes back to a one and eight team, is he really going to come back? And they'll be tanking at that point. So are they tanking for Caleb Williams? That would mean to end the Kirk Cousins. I think Kirk Cousins entire contract was guaranteed. So all that money's probably already been paid out. But uh, that's that's really we'll see. Let's see where they're at in a month, man. They might be right in the middle of that Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams bonanza. Four weeks, four weeks for Jefferson, they're saying, huh? Yeah, and breaking news, my my seven year old just told me uh, that's what he wants his Halloween costume as. He he's gonna go as Justin Jefferson. So we're we're looking on, online right now for jerseys for him. He doesn't know he had a pulled hamstring, so we might have him mm. limp or limp down the street trick or treating. But he's gonna be Justin Jefferson on yeah. October third. Ace bandage and an ice pack. You got some some maybe some laughs from Vikings fans out there. What that turned to a hot mess real fast. Yeah. Cousins, I mean cousins still to the Jets. Cousins, maybe to the Patriots, if Belichick, we talked about it in the hot news, if Belichick wants to try to do a survival line. But I think they're also in that Caleb Williams market pretty soon. I think the end of Belichick, and it's time for Caleb Williams if they go that direction, which is lose them all. Falcons, actually, our guy Ritter is turning around a little bit. Nothing crazy to write home about, but uh, Cousin has, he could have some landing spots. 
Um, what else? What else in NFL quickly? And we'll do one star moments, Rip. What do we, anything in the NFL jump out at you? Just a quick nugget from that Rams Eagles game at SoFi Stadium. Uh, first time I've ever been automatically in my top three stadiums. It, it's amazing, DK. It's uh, I think one of the newest in the NFL. I think it's two years old, but the Chargers and, and Rams both share it. Uh, not a bad seat in the house. We were in the 500 level. Shout out to 500 level.com. The visibility is. It's so steep. The visibility is amazing. Uh, good views from everywhere. Awesome scoreboard goes around the entire stadium. So if you haven't been to SoFi yet, get there if you can to check it out. It's one of the best. I like all the screens around the upper upper deck, the donut up top with all the screens and all the other games playing pregame. It's a good seat. It's not better than sitting on top of a mountain and watching Cardinals games. It's, you know, there's the best seat in football. That's one star for sure. But they don't do, they're not at Sun Devil Stadium anymore. Come on, man. They got their own stadium. And now they're doing big things, big things, Josh Dobbs. All right, NFL, we'll be back. One star moment of the week, Rip. Man, go ahead, because I don't have, I've had a pretty good week for, for being a bonehead. Yeah, mine actually involves that game. And, and you know, everyone knows I'm a value guy. I'm cheap as shit. And, and so I parked, you know, parking's crazy around any stadium, especially in, in Inglewood uh, near SoFi Stadium. I What I did was I parked in a neighborhood two miles away and I ran. I ran into the game to try to make kickoff. I got there at about – I parked at about 1240. Kickoff was 105. So I parked in front of someone's house for free, ran two miles to the game, got there extremely sweaty, extremely tired, extremely smelly, ran up to the 500 level, which took like another 15 minutes, sat down next to my cousin, totally out of breath, stinking. Like I needed the, I needed a shower more than even probably the players on the field. Uh, so that's my one star moment of the week, but I also did not pay a dime to park. So embarrassing. You're still doing that stuff. You're doing that stuff. When I met you 20 years ago, that's a classic rip move. Still exactly that move. That's it. Hey, 14 years ago, we ran, we were running into uh, Raymond James stadium for the super bowl in Tampa, man. We're running up those ramps for during the flyover for that Cardinal Steelers super bowl. It brought back memories of that, man. You're going to ruin your Elliot Perry. Jersey shirt doing that rip. You get pit stains in that thing. Oh, I was I was sweating like crazy, bro. It, it, yeah, it was it was not a good situation. But by by halftime, I think I was back to normal. But I still stunk. Unbelievable! You gotta you gotta start parking just in the regular. Um, and it, it's like a hundred bucks to park it's anywhere. Also the valet. It's also the valet. You pro and very risky in, in that neighborhood to get a, a parking ticket in that hey. neighborhood. Uh, I'm one for one, man. Not getting my car broken into. It was just, just like I left it, man. So shout out to the people of Inglewood and uh, SoFi Stadium. Not bad, not bad. At my ripe old age of 42, my lesson learned in my one star moment. I've been told my whole life there's these are bathroom shower towels and not like towels to clean stuff up in. Never fully connected until. I used bathroom shower white towels to clean up a little bit of mud was tracked into the house and it was just there and I used it and I thought, oh, the it will clean right out in the machine. Guess who had to fess up to the the family to my wife and various I, I have to buy all new towels for this uh, for this lovely cottage because I I didn't process that that could actually ruin the towels. So Mud on towels, one star moment, very basic, but just also so dumb. Like I just needed to go grab a rag. I have rags in the outdoor area. So fucking a so dumb. I, I've been banned from doing laundry for the most part in my house, especially with like delicates. And I, I can't, I ruined a pillow, a couch pillow the other day. It happens, man. Even, even in your forties, we, us men, man, we, we, we need lessons on, on doing laundry. Oh boy. You did, did you do the nasty on the couch pillow? Little no, just... no, the dog actually peed on it, but I put the thing in the washing machine and then the dryer, and it just ruined all the inside. So it, it's in the dryer. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I've done that before. Yeah. I have a, yeah, I'm banned too. It's very difficult. Still, even the whites and the, the whites and the colors combo throw, throw people in my household off completely. So one star washers, man, and dryers. One star recommendation of the week. Anything we did that made us feel good. This one's pretty damn good for me. Um, I introduced a new concept to a human being, which you don't get to do a lot of times. And it felt fucking good, dude. I go to this place, Lawai Market, in the mornings to get breakfast burritos, maybe like two days a week. Great breakfast burritos, chorizo breakfast burritos. They're already pre-wrapped. You just grab them. Uh, I was in there at 10. They go down to five bucks from 10 and, and beyond. So they have that. They have some masubis. They have some other little 
um, like breakfast egg rolls. And then they have the hash brown patties, the McDonald's style hash brown patties. So I said, hey, let me get a breakfast burrito. Do you mind if you put this hash brown patty in it and just reheat it up for me with some cheese? Boom. She did it. She came back out with a big old smile. She said, this is the first time I've seen anybody do this move. Custom. I said, what? Really? Very interesting. Because it's a fairly common move. I can tell you where I learned it initially. But it is a fairly common move. Uh, And I took that thing home. I'll send you a picture. Just the creme de la creme extra addition in a breakfast burrito that's very simple that you can actually solve in your life if you want this type of breakfast burrito uh, by simply going to your favorite breakfast burrito place. If they don't have it, fine. Just go to McDonald's. $1.19 $1.19 and get one of them, open it up, unroll it, put it on top, roll it back up, cut in, in half. Enjoy. Heavenly. So I got to show her something new. So she was she came back. The kitchen seemed excited by that opportunity. Everybody seemed very excited at the Lawai market. And I, I felt very fucking good, man. So there it is, Rip. What do you think? Man, man you had me at, at $5 burrito, breakfast burritos after 10 o'clock. But yeah, it's it, passing value to other people that, that's what the show is all about man so you you get the crunch with the hash brown hash brown so a little crunchy and then you get this the softness of, of taking a bite of the burrito at the same time it's great it's decadent man it's levels up and where i heard about this is actually with my buddy gwald who likes to eat them separate this was a big discussion that we had but at one point in time he would do what he calls mcdonald's brunch which is was gangster it was just getting a mcgriddle or a uh or an egg McMuffin, and he would put it right inside the hash brown, right inside one of those. So kind of established from that that thought. Um, instead of eating it separately, which they're delicious, you know, you go through the drive through. It's the first thing out of the bag in the morning. Bam, right in your mouth. It's delicious. Uh, if you have a little patience, throw it in your breakfast sando. Level it up. I love it, man. Yeah, passing value on and introducing new concepts, man. That's what the show and the segment are all about. DK, props to you. Fuck. It's very kind. Yeah, very kind for my lame for my lame ass recommendations this week. But I, but I'll take it. I mentioned breakfast burrito. I mentioned this story to about four other people in my life. Nobody else thought it was cool or exciting at all. So thank thank you for being a good friend, Rip. Show me some love. <laughs> all right, DK. I rec- for this is for parents out there. We got a uh, you know breakfast on the go and breakfast before school early in the morning can be can be tough, but. We got uh, if you got a Trader Joe's anywhere near you, they have these little mini pancakes and they microwave in 30 seconds, DK. So it's the best 30 second breakfast you can do. It's a box of these pancakes for like three or four bucks. Trader Joe's, they're just mini little mini pancakes like the size of a half dollar or silver dollar. And uh, the kids love them, man. You throw some syrup on there, some berries, whatever. It's uh that that's the wreck of the week, man. It's just you know, if you're a parent, you get it, man. If you're if you would eat them, DK. I think you would like these things, but uh, there's like 50 in the bag. Oh my god. It, it means it's no no none of us has had good wrecks of the week when we both are doing breakfast items. That's the bottom line of this whole podcast. But thank you. I gotta go do an air pit port pickup rip. Great interview with Chris Heron. That's where the juice is in this whole episode. We have uh, some great basketball stuff coming up in the next couple of weeks. So listeners, keep rolling with us. We're going to slide more into basketball and the NBA season. Everybody knows that's our specialty anyway. So go Phoenix Suns. Enjoy the preseason. Enjoy the baseball playoffs. We didn't even talk Diamondbacks, but guess what? Next week, we're talking Diamondbacks. Rip, we are got to talk our guy Longoria. We'll see you next week. Go D-backs. See you next week.